welcome back to Glory Hunter, episode 12. And this is the start of season 2 with Manchester United. So I have stayed at the side. I'm going to introduce you to the transfers, the outs and ins in that order. And some of, just the big ones, just the big ones. And I'll just do a, a like a, an overview at the, at the end. And then also I'm going to play the Community Shield game against Arsenal just so we can get like into the, into the sort of, um, a structure that we're going to get back into again. So let's go to the first out. Right. Okay. The first big out of this epi, of well, this episode of this season was Andrea Bellotti. So scoring three goals in 21 games for us wasn't really ideal. Um, I thought for his technical ability, heading, finishing, his work rate, his mentals are insane, his physicals are also insane. I thought he'd be really, really good in the system that I wanted to play, which is like focusing on that attacking player, press, bit of pace, just clinical, getting forward, running onto the balls, making the runs. He was useless. He didn't really do anything for us. And I sort of put him on the transfer list thinking, let's see what we can get for him. He was worth about 47, 49 million at the time. We saw, we got 45 million straight up, I believe, for him. So I can't see why we wouldn't sell him for that. It's a 19 million pound profit over one season where for a striker who scored three goals in 21 games in the Premier League, is awful. I think Greenwood matched that with four starts, only four starts. So, yeah, Bellotti, he's gone. He's already injured four weeks out. No skin off my back. He's gone. Now, there's two more that I'll cover anyway. First one, which isn't really a big one because he didn't feature at all really last season, it's Jesse Lingard. So, as you can see, uh, well, he's gone, but Look at his technical stats. They are really average. I'd say championship star player, sort of like leading player in championship standard. Mentals are really good. Off the ball, great run, runs off the ball. Decent top half of those mentals which you look for. And then physically, obviously, he's all there. But I just couldn't find... We didn't play an attacking midfielder throughout the whole of the season. Left side was more or less taken up by Marcus Rashford every single game because he has unreal natural fitness and stamina and he just played there naturally and then on the right hand side as a winger I preferred Dan James Dan James seemed to just play on the on FM this year he has he's like really really good so I thought why not let's have a look how he did he had nine starts I think this was in January he went he had nine starts and three goals he played pretty well 13 starts overall as you can see at the bottom there um, just four goals, it's all right. It's not bad for a, a sort of player of his calibre, but he was awful for us. Six games in the Premier League, one assist. It was really bad. So he's gone, 22.5 million. I sort of live on the philosophy of would I sign, looking at this player, would I sign him? I would not sign this player for the current United side at all. He's just not good all round. So that's the philosophy. He's gone. 22 and a half million. Decent, decent money, decent money. Right, the third and final out I'm going to be covering is Andreas Pereira. This man did unreal at Wolves last season. He did absolutely unreal. I think he played, yeah, as you can see, he played the 33, I think he played 33 games in the league. Yeah, 33 games in the league, 13 assists. He was unreal. He played really, really well for them. I was, I was looking forward for, to him coming back and just playing because his wage was like minimal. He, he could just come on and he could just stick him in there and do a, do a job. He's, he's like Fred, but Fred's a bit more mentally aware and technically he's a little, he's, he's about on the same level. But the mentals aren't great. The physicals are great where you want them to be. And the technically he's very, very, very good Pereira. So I could see how he was that good. But there was a clause in the contract when I loaned him out for 22 million or 21 and a half million or whatever it was. So we ended up getting about 24 million for him. So it's, it's not the worst deal in the world, but I was looking forward to him coming back, but sadly he has gone. So I'll be, I'll be keeping an eye on Andres Pereira, seeing where his career goes. Now then, Christian 
Eriksson. The first in I'm going to cover is Christian Eriksson, and I'm just going to, I'll show you, his, his contract was running out, and they still wanted 24 million for him, around about, oh, I don't know, it, it, was, it was like late March, and I thought, I, I'm just not going to get him. So as I kept my eye on him throughout the episodes. You might have seen little like news bits and bobs where I was bidding for him and whatever. I bid 500k and they accepted it straight away because they, I think he wanted to go on a free transfer. So I just bid 500k. It's nothing. It, it's genuinely nothing for us. So it says I've bought him 500k. I've I've bought him 500k, but it was just to avoid him losing him out to any other side. He didn't have a great gate like last season, but the reason for Ericsson coming in is I needed someone to re either replace Pogba because breaking news he wants to leave, or someone to sort of partner Pogba in the new formation I'm running, which is more of an attacking midfielder. So I'll show you as a, when I play Arsenal. But he is phenomenal. He he's just been he's really good player. He's been doing it for years. He's just really, really good. He's got a bit of an injury problem and whatever. 170k a week is nothing for this calibre of player. 17 long shots, 16 first touch, 15 finishing, 16 passing, 16 vision, 17 technique, 16 work rate. Great stamina, like great stamina, great anticipation, composure, agility. He's just a standout player. Like He's really good, elite as they describe him. I can probably see him getting better as he's reaching his prime years now. So yeah, that's that's the reason he's come in. Um, four year contract. I'm looking forward to seeing him play in this side and how he performs. Was more of a creative player, not more of an attacking midfielder. But we've also brought someone in who is um, quite relevant at the moment. I'll, let me just show you. Yes, as you guessed, in real life he's signed, and on the game he's signed. It's Bruno Fernandez, 25 years of age. Let's just look how much. 50 million, around about the same as what we paid in real life as well. Last season, 10 goals, 2 assists in 27 games. He's just a machine. The man's a machine, what can I say? He's come. He's, I've never really heard of the man. I've never really heard of him. He, he's, he, last two years or so, he just come out of the blue and he's scored a lot of goals. Two years ago, obviously, you'd heard of him. I'd heard of him. But I didn't think much of him. He's just like. It's just one of those seasons you have, and then all of a sudden, the next season he's doing great again, and then this season performing great again. He's just found it; he's got on the right wavelength that he needs to be on. And as you can see, technically, absolutely brilliant. Mentally, he's got everything that you need there, and physically, he's he's really good stamina wise. Not really that pacey, but it's not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for that stamina, agility, and balance, which it which is there. It's all there, but technically, that is. That is definitely what you look for. All the correct mentals as well. Bravery is great for him. Composure, flair, determination, leadership. Can play in that sort of central midfield role, attacking central midfield role if I need it, as well as playing that attacking midfielder role, which I wanted to play this season. A few more long shots from outside the box to support Martial. So yeah, he, he's, de he's someone that I'm very happy to have got. 50 million. More, I'd say he's more of a replacement for Lingard because Lingard is that centre attacking midfielder we had. So paying double, double, adding twenty five million onto whatever Lingard's fee was. I can't agree. I can't disagree. Sorry, with getting Bruno Fernandes in. So yeah, I'll bring us to the final player that I brought in. It might be a bit of a surprise for you. I think I talked about him in the season review, and I'll just quickly show you him um, before I just round them all up. Okay, so this might be an odd one, but it's Manuel Akanji. Um, I wanted to, Maguire isn't fast enough to cope with the balls being played over the top, so I had to sit the defence a bit deeper, which caused us to play like a, a route one tactic, which I wasn't really a fan of. I wanted to be because you saw a lot of the interplay passes when I pushed forward against the smaller sides, so I wanted someone with a bit of pace to sort of replace him in a way, and. Akanji was going for a decent price, I've got to admit. It's 47.5 million. There was him, I tried Skriniar, they wanted loads for him. Varane, they wanted loads for him. 
And there was some, there was one other defender, Ruben Diaz. They wanted 53 million for it, 54 million for him, which was, I, I did. But then contract wise, he didn't want to sign anything until after the Euros. Um, and then he just went straight to Liverpool, I think, which was a bit odd. But yeah, Akanji has been brought in. He's a regular starter. He's on 100k a week, which is like nothing for a regular starter. But he'll be coming off the bench, sort of mixing in with, um, what's his name? Maguire. So, sort of, on one end I've got someone that's like a traditional defender in Maguire, and then I've got this new sort of centre-back, which is modern football, where you've got the pace, you've got, his, his mentals are pretty much there where you need them, positioning-wise he's not great, back up right back if I need him, because he's got the pace, he's got the pace in abundance, as well as the marking and the tackling. So, I can't see why I wouldn't have done this deal, but then I can also see why I would have done this deal, but it, when I, I'll just quickly summarise all the transfers for you now. There's been a lot of outs, a lot of outs, and our net, our net transfer, um, net transfer, yeah, the net transfers, um, value, sorry, is not as much as you think. You think Akanji, Fernandez, um, Ericsson, it's going to be massive. It's not, trust me. So here we have it. It is. I'll just, I'll do it by fees. There's a few more faces that I'll show here, but on the outs, Bellotti, 45, Lingard, 22, Pereira, 22. Chris Smalling left, I didn't want him in the side. He's just getting old now. I needed to sell him when I could. Um, could have probably played instead of a Kanji, but I just wanted someone with a bit more experience, a bit younger. A bit, a bit more potential, a bit younger in the side, but still a very good player. So Chris Smalling's gone out to Leicester for 17 million. Juan Matas left the club for 14 million. He was taking up a lot of wage budget for how little he played. Romero's left because we obviously have brought Buffon in, which you saw in the uh, previous episode's time. Phil Jones has gone to Newcastle. Uh, he just wasn't playing well at Everton. I think, it, I think he went to Everton. Let me just double check. Wherever he went, he went to Aston Villa on loan and he played awful. Like, or he's just average. Just average player. Just didn't, didn't do much. So Newcastle took him off us. And then Fosu Mensa as well. Didn't play at all last season. Feel sorry for him, really. I thought I'd just go and let him get some football somewhere. And then just a few outs and loans here and there. On this side, you'll see we've got Bruno Fernandes at the top there with the Kanji up next. Donny van der Beek. I've brought him in. Um, 32, 38, 38 million. He's just a really good player. 23 years of age, can improve, I believe he'll pr improve anyway, but he's just very good regardless. Can play, again, like Bruno, that deep line playmaker role, really, really good, can play that midfielder role, but also can play that sort of attacking midfielder role. So him and Goretzka, in, I think box-to-box bo -box midfielder. I'm, his stats scream box-to-box -box mid midfielder, mid midfielder to me. Maybe a bit of strength here and there. Positioning perhaps is a key, key one that he's not really good at. But I, I think for a box to box midfielder, he's very, very good. If you just can quickly compare him to Goretzka, who we've got already got in this club, their hexagons look very similar, like incredibly similar. And then you look at the attributes, Donny van der Beek probably a bit better tiny bit better technically. Goretzka a tiny bit better mentally than Goretzka has the edge in him on pace. But that's about it. And then again, Ezekiel Palacios, I noticed he he was unhappy. That's why I brought him in. So Monaco signed him for five million. He had a pretty good season and then I've decided to bring him in. Because as I was anticipating, Pogba was going. Fred wasn't really doing the, the business for me. And I've just brought him in. I want to see him succeed at United. He's a very, very good player. £110,000 a week is quite a lot for him, considering he's just going to be a squad player coming in and out. But he is very, very good. Um, very good. Potential as well. He's Potential is way up there. So £35 million now, forty-two and a half potential payment. I think decent, decent. And then we have Christoph Ayer. Christoph Ayer we've brought in... Fisher, Victor Fisher, he's got injured already. He's out for two months. Um, just a good player, just to sort of... I've put Dan James out on loan. He was just to replace sort of Dan Lo Jones. Dan, Dan Jones? Dan James as a left mid. And then obviously Ericsson. Buffon coming in as that sort of backup, but I've also got Dean Henderson. And then this man, I can't really pronounce his name, Sergio Regulon. 
he's pretty good. He's very good. I got him on a free. Um, forty-five million. I know. I, I just saw him. I thought you're pretty good. I'll take you to sort of back up Luke Shaw and Kazawa because Kazawa was getting injured all the time. So was Luke Shaw. I thought I'd just bring him in. Easy. You can play like a left mid role if you need to. He's just a very good player. So that, there's the ins and outs. I'm just going to dive straight into this sort of Arsenal game and I shall let you know when we play. Right, here we have it. So, going to start the game here. We've got De Gea in net, Shaw, Lindelof, Akanji and Dallo as a... Dallo has become a very, very, very good player after going out on loan, as I've seen him. Wing-back-wise, anyway. Marking's decent and tackling's decent, but he's crossing and dribbling and physicals as well. Mentals as well. Like, I don't know where he's coming from. If you compare him to Juan Bissaka, I know doing, this episode's going to probably drag on quite a bit as well, but I'm going to be as quick as I can. Technically, Dallo is actually very, very good. Um, he's just a tackling that sort of wan is a bit better than. And then mentally, he's a bit better than wan and physically, he's better than wan which in real life, I don't think so. Getting forward, Dallo's obviously better in real life, but wan is definitely the better right back in the sense of being a bit like tackling wise and stuff like that. So it's probably accurate, but I can't see. I don't know why Dallo's so good in the game this year. But yeah, he's definitely there. And I'm playing Ezekiel Palacios in the middle there with Ericsson as an advanced playmaker. Just testing this out. I might play Ericsson and Goretzka, but Palacios is. I'm just going to get him to start the game. See what, see how he plays. Sancho on the right, Rashford on the left back from the injury, and Martial up front as ever. Tactics wise, just sort of playing out from the back net this year. Um, I'm still going to play it extra wide, actually, uh, and keep the tempo quite high. But I uh, do low crosses as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this, this side's looking for now. On the bench, Buffon, Wambasaka, Maguire, Goretzka, Van der Beek, um, Yanazai and Greenwood. And then on the bench here, a few fitness problems for these two. McTominay's in there with Ayer and then Pogba down here. Unhappy, as you can see. Um, priced out of move as PSG offered me 60 million for him. I'm not letting them have him for that. But let's get into the game against Arsenal. I don't know if Arsenal have brought in... I think they've done quite a bit of transfer business. I'll have to have a look at where, what their side's looking like. They've brought in Saar, who's making his debut. And, and Lozano, who's making his debut as well. I'd say that's a weaker side. No Aubameyang. No Nicolas Pepe. David Luiz now on the bench. No Leno in there. It doesn't look like a very strong side. I'm going to get passionate. These fans have been fantastic for us. Let's see what we can do with this. And we're going to get straight into the game. So, oh, I've, and tell you what, I tell you what, this is, this was going through pre-season. I'm going to turn this right down. Right down. There we are. Right. Back to normal. Rashford on the ball to Luke Shaw. He finds the cross into Sancho at the back post. And luckily, I paused that and it's a goal. Three minutes in, we've scored against Arsenal already. Sancho with the goal. Decent save there from a shot by, I think it was Fernandez, Bruno Fernandez of, every, of anyone. Crossed in towards Martial and Sancho's out of the back post. Just smashes it into the, past the near post of Martinez. Great goal and great start, if anything. We're looking pretty strong already. Key for this season, I think I'm going to try and make it keep possession a bit more because I noticed last season we didn't keep possession as much. I know it wasn't it wasn't that bad a thing anyway because we won the league, we won we won as much as we did. But yeah, um, it's just one of them things. I just want to get more possession just to try and hold on to the ball a bit. As who was out of position there? I think it was I think it was Luke Shaw was out of position and Bellerin gets in behind. Bit of a scary, shaky start then. Saar with the ball. It Was that Saar? No, it was Saka with the ball then, sorry. And that goes way over. Like, way, way over. So, I'm pretty comfortable at the moment. Playing pretty well. Can't fault the lads. Dallow with the ball forward. That was classic. It was last season. That was punting the ball over to Marshall, but I think they're wiser to it now. Saka on the ball to Lazzano. What can he do? Can't find anyone. Nice bit of interplay there between... Akanji and Dallo. Just want them to sort of keep the positions now. Played out to Saar, to Socrates. Will he find Saka? He does. And Luke Shaw's not having the greatest of games. And Saka just puts it over the bar. Goal kick for us now. 
they're coming back into the game a little bit. Just so sort of, Luke Shaw's doing well, he's getting forward, but he's just staying back where he's just a bit not doing too well. I've got my, um, Mick Phelan's feedback at the bottom there instead of the latest scores at the moment. But yeah, descending set pieces isn't perfect. I can sort of agree with that. But they're looking all fired up towards the end of this first half. Let's see what they can do. It's 45th minute exactly with an A of a free kick. But we come forward here. Rashford with a poor header clear, but he runs back onto it. And he takes it round him with the momentum. Can he shoot? He can, and Martin have saved. Rashford did really well there. I thought he might have gone forward and passed it. But we're doing all right. We're doing all right. I'm going to stay calm. Make sure we think, make sure we see things out and then show our hands blah blah blah. No, I don't want to do that. I'm gonna say don't get complacent. There we go. Love it. They love it. Don't get complacent. It's the one thing you don't want to do at all in a final anyway. Shaw, Shaw into Rashford there. To Ericsson. Can he find a cross? He can't. Luke Shaw tries to cross it in, which was poor. Poor is being kind. And it's cleared away by Arsenal. Dallo coming forward. Now Sancho who loses the ball and Looks like Arsenal are going to look to counter here. But Eriksen nicks it back off him. Bruno Fernandes and then now playing through. It's to Rashford. Rashford, what can you do with it? And he just... He should have drove forward there again and shoots near post. I'm going to tell him to get a bit more creative because we need to see a bit more creativity here. De Gea having a great game, apparently. Like a really good game. Coming up to the 60th minute, I might make a few changes because Bruno Fernandes isn't really playing that well in that sort of attacking midfielder role. I'll we'll see what Eriksen can do there. As the balls play through towards Martial, and a poor back pass by Saar there. I know it's his debut, but flipping heck, that was, that was a risky one. Bruno Fernandes on the corner now. Great corner into Sancho who puts it over the bar. And it's a goal kick. They're looking all fired up. We're going to make the tactical change now. We're going to take Fernandes off. Well, yeah, we're taking him off. We're going to put Eriksen on. And I'm going to bring on Van der Beek just to get his little debut in as a box-to-box -box midfielder. See what he can do. And play a bit more of a supportive role there. Um, yeah, I just don't. I just want to see, try and see if we can see this game out. Luke Shaw is looking a bit, a bit on the soft side as well. He's looking like he needs to come off. Palacios isn't having the greatest of games either. Saka with the ball in now. Towards Saar at the near post. And Saar, what a header. Debut for Arsenal as well. Really good header in there. And Arsenal are proving to be quite a tricky side to come over here. Saar unmarked completely. And heads it into the goal. So I have to tell them to mark up here and see what we can do. But he's having a pretty good game now. I'm going to bring off Luke Shaw now. I'm going to bring on... I'm going to play Dallo on the left, and I'll bring Wan Bissaka on, and I'll I'll just play them in a more defensive role. I don't want to see, don't want us to get too far forward now. And I think as our other sub, Eriksen's been playing really poor, but so is Palacios. Hmm. I'm going to bring on Goretzka. I'll bring on Goretzka and play these two in more of a deep line. Playmaker and box to box midfielder, sort of as we've been doing all season. And I'm going to get Sancho pushing a bit forward. I'm going to get him pushing forward as well. Going to go a bit more attacking. Yeah, look for that overlap. And I'm going to focus. Let's distribute it over the top. Let's get it a bit over the top and push forward a little bit more. See what we can do as well. Sancho coming forward from the tactic, coming off the tactics board, and Marshall with a terrible effort there. That was. Awful. Right over the bar. I'm going to tell them to show a bit more passion. We need a bit more passion out there, lads. They're fired up. Saka with the fr corner now. In towards Saar again. What's happened there? <laughs> I thought that might have been a penalty there. I was a bit, a bit scared for a second. It's the 90th minute now. What can we do? They're looking uninterested. Can we sort of counter on this? On them looking uninterested? And it goes straight to penalties. So. We're going to go straight into it, change the camera up here, get behind the goal, as we always do, confirm the changes, and here we have it, our first penalty, sh <laughs> penalty shoot out of the season, Lacazette versus Dea, what can he do? And he slots it away in that bottom left-hand corner. 
cheeky cheeky. So this is just a community shield. I'm not too bothered about this. It'd be nice for the lads to win. Marshall now, bottom right. Beautiful, beautiful goal. I, I was just testing out the seam. So I know Ericsson probably prefers that sort of midfield role. Lozano now, what can he do? Great penalty. Really far into that bottom left-hand corner. Now Rashford. We know Rashford's good at penalties. But have I just jinxed him there? As he slots it beautifully in that bottom right-hand corner. Well played there by Rashford. Now Mkhitaryan. The ex-Manchester United man, what can he do? Can he put it home? He can't and De Gea saves. Beautiful save by De Gea there. Eriksen now, the new signing. On his debut for United in this Community Shield game. Puts it in that bottom right-hand corner. The quality is oozing through here. Xhaka now for Arsenal. The captain, or what was the captain, steps up. and th That is a thunderous effort into the back of the net. Jadon Sancho now, the wonder kid. What can he do? Let's have a look. Oof. risky one but he puts it in now then I think it's all down to this penalty who's taking it it's Saka the youngster he's pretty good is Saka good free kick taker I'll give him that and now De it's all down to De Gea this episode's probably dragged out a bit longer than it uh, originally planned and De Gea can he save it he can't as Saka puts that in the top right hand corner he dived the right way but it's just not there. And who's taking this? It's Goretzka. I'm just going to turn the camera back on. There we are. Come on, lads. They hit that 30-minute mark on the recording. Goretzka steps up. He played well for us last season. Can he make it 5-5? Five five? He can. It's the top corner. We've won the Community Shield. There they are, the lads. I'm going to have to remember next season to just have it so that if we win anything, we can see these animations. Because it... These animations are just, just the small things make it a bit more intriguing as we come into this. So, there we have it. We, it was sort of an even game, if anything. They had a few more shots on target. Let's have a look at the clear-cut chances. They had two, and we only had the one. We got off to a good start, but then it just sort of dragged out the game. <gasps> I'm going to be calm. I'm going to be calm about it. I'm very happy with the result. I'm just happy with the result. I'm not going to tell them I wasn't too happy with the second half, but... There we have it. So, Community Shield, we've won the Community Shield. Going through, Marshall has perfected his new ability in his new position. Striker, he's happy with where he plays. 14 medals, here they are, the 14 medals for the Community Shield winners. We re lead into glory. And here we have Real Madrid offering out 60 million for Paul Pogba. Now his value is 75, I'm just going to straight up reject the offer. That is awful. Considering he's a world class midfielder as well. Anyway, I'm just going to quickly pop up the graphic I've made for the, uh, what's it called? It's for the, blah, 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 blah. oh I've completely forgot. Ah, for the trophies, the trophy, trophy wall, I think I've called it, the trophy wall. Um, so the bottom left, I'm going to see, try and see if we can do this now. Down there should be the Premier League, and then it's French Cup, the French League Cup, and it's the Bundesliga title, Italian Serie A, uh, Serie A, Calcio A title, and then the La Liga title, and all the cups as well. So like the Copa, I think it's the Copa del Rey, the the Super Cup for or the Super, the Copa Copa something for the Italian one. I need to do my research on it, and all the other ones in there so the FA Cup as well so I've put up the ones that are highlighted is where we're at, we are active this season and also I think to the left here to the well to the right should I say to the right there is the Europa League, Europa League and the Euro Champions League so as you can see we've got one there so I've got the Europa League but the Champions League is now highlighted since we're in the Champions League and then to this side is the World Cup and the Euro European Cup European UEFA Euro Cup which we aren't active in. I'm definitely not looking to do that yet. That would be something that I'd just sort of aim to do off the off a whim sort of thing, where if I get sacked, which is like is, it could happen. I won't say likely to happen, but it could happen. Um, yeah, it's there. It's there. It's probably something that I'd do if I get sacked. If I can't find the time to do anything else, 
I don't think I do it the same time as a club. I'm going to try and keep it a bit realistic, if anything. So yeah, that has been this episode. I hope you're looking forward to season two. Hope you're looking, liking the look of the side. As we know now, probably Palacios comes off in place of Goretzka, who can play sort of this box-to-box midfielder role here, and we have Fernandez up top replacing them through there. So, as ever, if you did like the video, leave a like. If you're happy with the content and how it's going, I notice it's got two likes on the on um, the FA Cup video. I am recording these in advance, obviously. Um, I don't want to be recording these over a weekend or I need the re- weekends free for my uni work and stuff like that. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy them. You like, I got the two likes on the FA Cup video, that was it as well. The European Cup video is coming out today. This is a Thursday, I'm recording this. Come out for the Monday, I believe. Coming out on the Monday after the season review on the Friday. So yeah, I hope you did enjoy. Keep subscribing, keep liking the videos, leave comments if you are really getting into it. I'm just enjoying this sort of series. I'm going to try to start doing maybe something new if I can find the time as well. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy. And I shall see you in the next episode. Ciao.